that in doing a lot of scanning tests, 2K, 4K, 6K, 8K, and so on, um, that the scan is really the most important, important part of that process. Um, and so you can scan in 4K and work in 2K and have the benefit of 4K that you wouldn't have if you scanned and worked and kept everything in 2K. Right, well that's an interesting message really for the audience too, which is that if you scan in at 4K, even though you might be watching a standard 2K Blu-ray, there are benefits that accrue. And, and what is it that you're actually seeing? Is it just detail? It's detail. It helps, I think, in a lot of ways in terms of grain management, because we're very much not in favor of altering the film, you know, from any given era. So we try not to, you know, we don't like the process of removing grain. But it does help to manage that, you know, and um, I think our Blu-rays over the years have kind of shown that, the kind of, kind of response we get from fans and critics as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the things that we got a chance to see when we were at Colorworks was the restoration that you're doing, a little bit about the restoration you're doing on Lawrence of Arabia now. Um, I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about that. I know we had a very interesting experience of being able to see some artifacts and things that you had essentially been able to unearth for the first time uh, and bring into the electronic domain from the negative. Can you tell us a little bit about how well, that's Well, scanning in 4K, of course, is, uh, well, 4K in and of itself is rather unforgiving in terms of the detail that you can see. You can see uh, there's a sharpness to the image. There's detail in, in shadow areas and so forth that you maybe haven't seen before because we're so used to not looking at what is essentially the original negative. And, um, and this film is actually seriously damaged in a lot of ways uh, that we've never encountered before in terms of uh, uh, original damage to the emulsion of the negative. So it's been pretty challenging to work on this and try to fix those problems. What caused that damage to the film? Uh, well, a lot of the damage was caused uh, at the point at which it was shot. Um, the heat of the desert, you know, the film moving out of cold storage, shooting, moving back into cold storage, getting shipped, shipped back, you know, all that kind of, that kind of uh, process. Um, the emulsion was damaged and cracked and then healed over and kind of sealed in that damage. Um, so that if you look at, for example, shine a light on the um, emulsion of the negative, it looks very smooth. But when you look at it in detail from the scan, you can see all of these uh, cracks in the emulsion that, that in a traditional photochemical process, um, cascading from a negative to inner positive to negative sure. print, it, it tends to bury that kind of thing. Well, it's not buried now, so right. we're having to deal with that, and, and I think pretty successfully, and you know, looking forward to this coming out you know, this summer in theaters in 4K, as well as on Blu-ray. Fantastic. So, so really, uh, the audiences will have an opportunity, if you're able to get in and fix those, those problems with an original negative, the audience will have a chance to see the movie perhaps better than it ever was. Sure, this is about mastering and displays and so forth, but it's also about preservation and restoring the film and making it look the way it should. Well, Hugo, let's move on to you and, and talk a little bit about the generation of new content in 4K. Um, and just to put this in a little bit of perspective for the audience, you know, there has been digital image capture for professionals for many years now. Uh, and it's, for the most part, in 2K. We are really now just seeing the first 4K. Uh, cameras and um, I, there's there's certainly been some resistance in the in the past to taking on digital photography. There are those holdouts who would rather still shoot with film. Tell me a little bit about the F65 and some of the things that you've been able to to bring to that space to maybe convince those holdouts that this is finally the time. Where have the improvements been? Um, that's a good question. Um, as you probably know, we introduced uh, back in 2000 the first uh, digital camera to try to replace film. It was an HD cam. This was a, an adaptation of a television uh, video camcorder adapted to shoot uh, high definition film, 24 frames per second. Then in 2008, we introduced the F35 which was a single sensor, 
super 35 millimeter in order to be able to use the PL mount and the cinematographic lenses. And at the time, uh, we had a technology called the CCD. Uh, but it was, it was still a high definition camera, 1920 by 1080, red, green, and blue. And it produces spectacular pictures. But some people say, well, it's about the quality of 35 millimeter film. Uh, as you know, uh, Sony is one of the largest manufacturers of semiconductor technology for imaging sensors. And we have been working uh, for, to develop sensors for ultra high definition, which is 8K. Then the decision was made about uh, three years ago to accelerate the introduction of that sensor into more of a, a 4K world. And that's what gave rise to the birth of the F65. Great, so new high resolution imaging sensors are allowing the capture now. At it's a very, very special sensor that allows true 4K resolution in the red, the green, and the blue planes of the camera. Okay, so besides the resolution, what are the other benefits? How have you improved upon the